Hey everyone, uh, this is Patrick Donahoe. Welcome to another episode of uh, Financial Friday. And I'm going to briefly, yes, it's possible. I can speak for uh, and condense something into uh, 15 minutes. This is gonna be my, uh, my limit here. Uh, but I'm gonna uh, condense uh, my experience over the last, uh, geez, almost a week. Uh, it was actually a week ago, uh, but the Tony Robbins event that I attended. So this is a special one. This is for uh, Platinum Partners just kind of like an inner circle group of, uh, of Tony Robbins. Uh, and they do it once a year and it's uh, purely based on finance and, uh, and economics. And he's had speakers like uh, George Bush, Clinton, Bernanke, Greenspan, uh, Ray Dalio, uh, T. Boone Pickens, uh, and, uh, and, and a lot of other kind of professional, professional investors. Uh, but I'm just gonna give you guys my, uh, my top three takeaways. However, if you want to, if you're watching this right now and on YouTube, uh, you can just look for uh, the, the playlist uh, or the videos I did uh, that uh, it's like Patrick's Excellent Adventure or something like that. It basically has uh, four videos I did while I was at the summit that goes through in detail some of the things that I was uh, was learning. But I'm just going to highlight the top three uh, for now for you. Uh, so the first one uh, was was interesting. This is a this is a big thing that I think we all. Um, you know, can, can work on it. It's always going to be the case, which is the, the idea of focus. And, it, you know, what occurred to me is that regard, because this room was filled with just really successful people in all walks of all walks of life. You had a few billionaires in there, uh, but I got to talk to a number of people and it was, you know, it was very, you know, it was, it was a, a very high level group, probably the most high level group I've ever uh, been around, especially the number, there were about 300 of them there, uh, of us there. And, uh, you know, it was one of those, one of those things where it kept coming up over and over and over again, but it's the notion of, of focus. And I think oftentimes, you know, how we're conditioned is we, we focus on the things that are not going right, or we focus on the problems and we focus on, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the pessimistic side of things, as opposed to what we actually can control and focus on, which is what's going good, what's going right. Uh, and what that does, it, it, it provides a different state of mind uh, in regards to how we analyze things, how we take advantage of opportunities, and how we experience life. Uh, because ultimately, you know, the amount of money or success that, uh, that you achieve, you're always going to have that instinctive side of you that is looking for what's wrong. It's protecting you, right? It's looking out for uh, da uh, danger, right? So that you don't get harmed or hurt. Uh, but what it tends to do is affect our mind that we're all fo we're always focused on the negative, the bad, not necessarily the good, because there's always, always something good going on. And when the focus is there, listing things you're grateful for, or just, um, you know, saying, saying out loud, you know, a list of those, uh, you know, those things that you're, you're grateful for, um, or just thinking about, you know, the, the blessings that you have, or thinking about, you know, what is going right and list those. It's amazing what type of uh, mindset that creates. And uh, that's one of those keys to understanding opportunity is that if you have a pessimistic attitude, you're not going to see opportunity. And uh, so therefore mindset is, uh, is key. So I know that that's uh, general, maybe not be, it's not necessarily financial, uh, but uh, in my experience, it leads to financial. And I, you know, I have dozens of employees. I have, uh, you know, lots of responsibility on my shoulder. I'm a parent, I'm a husband. Um, and it's one of those things where there's always pressures. There's always something that's got not going as I want. However, uh, there are just amazing things that are going on. And so when my focus is there, my attitude is so much different. I show up different. I play different. Um, you know, I, I experience life differently. So take that, uh, take, take that as kind of the first, my first big takeaway uh, is something that's that simple. Uh, second is, uh, is, is interesting. This is uh, what I'm determining as the, the balance of certainty and uncertainty, which I've talked about uh, before. Uh, but he has a really interesting quote, and it's, it's deeper than I thought when I actually first, uh, you know, first heard it. But the quote is, the quality of your life is in direct proportion to the amount of uncertainty you can comfortably live with. Now, uncertainty, as he describes it, right, is, uh, is more, uh, it's variety, it's adventure, right? Those are some uncertain things. So uncertainty is what makes life exciting, uh, not boring. Um, and you know, uncertainty could also be very negative if you think about it. But at the same time, uncertainty is, 
you know, having fun adventures, surprises, roller coasters, going on trips, exploring new places, learning something new, you know, being with new people. I mean, that, that, those, those are experiences that, you know, uh, give, give life a, a lot of vitality because if everything was just the same over and 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 over again, that repetition is boring and we don't deal with that well. So the idea is like, okay, how do you balance certainty and uncertainty? So how I look at it is, you know, something that, uh, that Tony uses, which is, which is looking at your financial life with, uh, with a bucket mentality, right? Looking at, you know, we, I call it a hierarchy in the, in the book I wrote, Heads I Win, Tails You Lose. You know, I talk about the, the hierarchy of wealth and it's a very similar concept where you fill up that first bucket, that safety bucket or certainty bucket, um, and it has assets that you know are not going to uh, lose money. Assets that are protected, and insured, uh, you know, grow to an extent, uh, but also allow you a peace of mind so that you can start to experience uncertainty um, and that variety. And you do it, um, you know, in a in a responsible manner. And the uncertainty applies to you, but it could be you know having those adventures, doing you know vacations, doing fun things with your family. Uh, but the uncertainty could also be you know pursuing a different pr uh, position applying for a new position, applying for a new job, uh, you know, expanding your resume uh, and being more valuable to your employer or another employer, um, researching things about yourself, doing, it's just basically doing things that are different than they currently are. And that uncertainty is what I believe that he's referring to, right? That the quality of your life is you're taking on these new things and you're growing and expanding. I mean, that, un that uncertainty uh, is essentially, you know, reinforced and accentuated by, you know, a balance of uncertain, a uh, balance of certainty. Uh, so that was, uh, that was really cool to kind of, uh, to think through because in the end, we're all looking for, you know, a, a high quality of life and a high quality of life is not re uh, redundant things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. It's doing things that are exciting. And I think that the pursuit of that is always going to give this, you know, fulfillment and excitement. However, to be enjoyed, I look at having a foundation, having a, an offset of, uh, of certainty when it comes to your financial financial life. Okay, so that's the second thing. Third thing, I may even get this done in less than uh, 15 minutes. Uh, but the third thing was, uh, was interesting, and, it, and this was brought up a number of times, which is the, uh, the emotional uh, cycles that exist in, uh, in financial markets. Um, and it's big markets, but it's also, it's also small markets. Sentiment is uh is really vital to understand and it's interesting how we approach things sometimes right because you look at when you're approaching it as a, an observer right a third party observer we tend to look at things uh, rationally analytically uh, however when we're in the actual experience when we're not observing we're actually in there uh, it is uh, it's more of an emotional game than anything else and so one of the speakers was a uh, was a he manages i think 100 20, $30 billion. Um, uh, his name is Howard Marks. And, uh, and he went through and just talked about, he has a new uh, book coming uh, that's out, I believe. Uh, and, uh, you know, it is, it's one of those things where you would assume that big traders, whether it's hedge fund traders or, or VC funds or whomever, that they have it together and they're not emotional when you have volatility uh, they, and he basically made the case that they always are. And it's, you know, one of those most, it's the most, one of the most difficult things in their world when it comes to investment, which is, uh, making, you know, making decisions, okay. Based on fundamentals being in line, however, also adding the variable of, uh, of emotion. And if a certain emotional state is not present, that could be a no buy or a buy signal. Uh, and it's interesting. And right now, I think we're in this like euphoric state where, you know, people are just bidding up and buying for the sake of it. Um, an example that they get, that, that they uh, did at the at this event was they bid up the price of a hundred dollar bill. And so I want you to to think about it for a second. Okay, they were bidding. Uh, again, this is a room for a full of really successful people. And and Tony made the claim. Okay, who are who are my like you know risk takers out there? Who am I? Who are my ballers out there? And a couple of people raised their hand, right? And then he auctioned off a $100 bill. And so somebody offered, you know, 150, 200, 500, then it got to 1,000, then 5,000. And here's the catch is the person that bid the highest had to pay and got the dollar bill. But the second, the, the runner up didn't get the bill, but still had to pay. So it was fascinating. And the bidding got up to, 
uh, 50,000 and then $100,000. And the 50,000 guy had to pay. Same with the $100,000 guy, but the $50,000 guy didn't get everything. But I want you to look at going from 50 to 100, the guy knew it's a lot of money, but then he didn't know how much the $100,000 guy was gonna bid after that. It could have gone to a million. And so it's one of those things where in the actual mix, the emotions, the stuff that's going on in your brain is not rational because the rational thing, right, would have been not to bid more than $100 for $100. Have your experiences some other way. Now these guys may have been, you know, the billionaires in the room, I have no, I have no idea. And all of the money went to charity, et cetera. Uh, but regardless, you know, I would rather have experience. I would rather not have that experience and pay hundred thousand dollars for that for something. <laughs> it's there would be way more beneficial than that than that. Uh, but my point is, you know, these are where emotions come into play. And and right now, with where our world exists, there is a certain emotional state collectively when it comes to uh, at assets being bid up, whether it's real estate assets, whether it's commodities, whether it's stock. Uh, and it's an emotion and it's emotional game and the emotion right now is nonsensical right from a more greed standpoint or fear of missing out standpoint okay as opposed to like sell off I'm going you know, I'm running to the hills right those are two different emotions and so Howard Marks does a great job of talking about that emotional emotional cycle um, but then this is you know one kind of one last thing as we get into uh, you know th this idea of the emotional game which is something that made me think, because I've looked at the fundamentals of our economy and I look at you know, how much debt is out there, how much, you know, how much production, productivity is out there, which is not that much uh, at all. Um, but then Peter Diamandis, uh, for those of you who don't know him, man, you guys gotta follow this guy. This guy is just one of those thinkers. He went like 10 o'clock at night, three hours long, and he did not, his energy level, high as could be the entire time. It was, it was fascinating. And he talked about so many different subjects. And I cover some of them on the video that I mentioned in the beginning. You know, but Peter you know, made the case that life in the next, um, what did he say, 10 years? He said, I think he said 10 years. Over well, the next 10 years, there's gonna be more, uh, more economic growth, more prosperity than the previous 10 years, or previous 100 years combined. And his, his argument was how quickly technology is growing, but also the exposure to you know, uh, societies and markets that are currently not online. And he, basically, he said that you know, the statistics are showing four and a half billion people uh, will be online in the next, uh, the next 10 years. And, uh, and it's fascinating to think of it, you know, whether it's India as an emerging market, uh, Africa as an emerging market, you know, uh, China, the same thing. Uh, it is uh, in the Middle East, same thing. You know, it is, uh, it's one of those, one of those, uh, I think it's, it's made me think, it's made me think about, you know, what my, uh, you know, what my um, frame of reference is when it comes to where we're at as an economy, what the productivity is like, you know, what our, our debt situation, both short and long term is like. And what's going to happen as a as a result? Now, obviously, I don't play markets. Uh, at the same time, you know, I'm I'm curious because obviously, you know, the the markets are part of our our life. They fund the companies that we all use, right? And so, looking at you know consumer sentiment when it comes to you know just being alive, it's it's a. Uh, it's, it's gonna be interesting to see what the next 10 years holds. Uh, but from a transportation standpoint, uh, from a communication standpoint, I mean, our lives are gonna change really quickly. And, uh, and it's exciting to me. At the same time, it could definitely be disruptive to whether it's companies or economies or governments. And uh, so looking at that, whenever emotion is high, especially fear and running to the hills, that's where all the opportunity exists. And uh, the last thing I was going to talk about, which I'm, you know, I'm already at 14 minutes. I'll just give you a little tease. Uh, is Ray Dalio? Now, Ray Dalio runs uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, funds, hedge funds in the in the world. Uh, you have, you know, the minimum investment you can make uh, with him is 1.5 million dollars. That's the minimum, and uh, you know, he's he's uh, he's done very well for himself. But what's interesting is, uh, you know, his thoughts in regard to economic cycles. 
Um, and he has you know, some theory associated with uh, economics and the best way to handle so much progress when it comes to technology and potentially the employment situations we can find ourselves in where technology is gonna take over a lot of employment. He has some amazing thoughts there. And uh, so those are on the videos of, of YouTube uh, that I did uh, on YouTube. So there's four of those videos, so go check those out. Uh, it's just the, you know, just research, you know, put Patrick Donahoe in there or Paradigm Life. Uh, or the well stand actually put the well standard in there and that should pop up um, and uh, there's four of those and it just says Tony Robbins Platinum Partners day one two three uh, sorry one two three and then four and five day four and five um, and I uh, hope you like them all right that's it uh, that's it for this week thanks for tuning in everyone and I uh, hope you have an amazing uh, amazing weekend see ya hey listeners thanks for tuning in my book the Amazon bestseller Heads I Win Tales You Lose, a financial strategy to reignite the American dream, is completely changing the way people look at saving, wealth, and retirement. Want a sneak peek? Head on over to www.headsortailsiwin.com forward slash podcast for a free audio and text download of my favorite chapter. Again, that's heads or tails, I win.com forward slash podcast.